September 27, 2011, uh, meeting of the City Council Finance Committee. Um, I will ask uh, uh, Clerk to uh, note the role, which is myself, Councilor LaBarge, and Councilor Tacey are here, so we have a quorum. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the August 23, 2011 minutes. Move to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion on those? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, then we have a couple of uh, financial orders uh, that we just want to review today. They would go on the agenda of the next week's meeting and we officially vote on them, but knowing we had a finance committee, we thought we would just do a review of them today so there'd be no uh, uh, any questions we can answer. So the first one is um, is upon the recommendation of the Mayor and Finance Committee um, order that the following amounts of borrowing authority under the following loan orders be and hereby are rescinded. Uh, and essentially it's three loan authorizations that the City Council had authorized the borrowing uh, for, uh, two of them in 2010, one in 2009, and uh, these uh, amounts are not going to be needed, so we want to just rescind the borrowing order for them. Were those, those were things that we knew we weren't going to use. We borrowed those on purpose so we had that money. Yeah. The, we showed our intent. Particularly the, the first, well, the, the first and the third one right. were for grants that we, we were applying for grants simultaneously for land acquisition. The second one, I'm trying to think, was that part of the... Uh, it was originally going to be a project, but then they decided to do something that they folded in with the ESCO. Yeah, right, so. yeah. So I think we, we authorized it, but then ended up putting in the ESCO. So in all three cases, they're, you know, it's, they're just these authorizations to borrow that are hanging out there that we're never going to use, so we want to just rescind them and get them off the books. Yeah. Um, I move to approve. So I, I guess what I would ask is, why don't we do a move to recommend them to the count, meaning, uh, what I mean is that, that we'll sponsor them at the next meeting or something like that. That we'll just okay, put, them on next, put them on the next finance committee agenda. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll sure. second it. So second it all in favor. Uh, so right. we're basically just recommending that it go on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, this is something that we do on a regular basis. We borrow money that we're not going to use and we know we're not going to use. Exactly. We don't, we, these we didn't even borrow the money. We just, they were well, authorized but on Authorized to borrow. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes it's to show good faith to whoever we're applying for yep. that you know we were serious about the project. Yeah. You know, okay. And that we are willing to if we have. Exactly. Um, so the second order, uh, the second one before us is, and I, I think I gave, a heads, I gave you a heads up about this at the um, finance committee at our last city council meeting. Uh, this is a um, transfer uh, in uh, the FY 2012. Um, uh, DPW budget, um, it would essentially be, be moving $10,000 from O&M over to P&S overtime in DPW flood control. And this is to cover a, um, you know, to cover uh, some additional uh, overtime expenses that were not anticipated because of Tropical Storm Irene. Uh, and there's a slight, there's a description that comes with it. Uh, we have applied for uh, FEMA and NEMA reimbursement, so we may end up getting this money back, but we, you know, in order to um, shore up that particular uh, that line item, sure. Ned just wants to move 10000 from O&M to the P&S account. And this money um, is not, it's not an executive, this is an estimate, this is what he, he figures, but we, this is money we'd like to get back, I know that, and yeah. like to be reimbursed. Yeah. yeah. Well, nothing comes out as even $10,000. Exactly. No, uh, he, so he, um, you know, I think historically there's, uh, they budgeted uh, 13,000, um, 16,000 was extent, expended. So he wants to, he doesn't want to just bring it back to zero. He wants to have a little bit more okay. in there. So we're trying to pick 10,000 just because that would be a round number. And it would leave at least 7,000 in the account in case we had more flood events this year. So. Um, Could you explain, David, on the DPW flood control? OM, since this is being taped, people understand what the OM means? Yeah, so the, the, all of our departmental budgets have an operations and maintenance account, which is uh, to pay for you know, normal operations, you know, maintenance supplies, all those kinds of things. So the flood control, that whole division that, that deals with flood control has both an OM and then it has this PS account for overtime. Because most of the work they do is going to be 
an emergency situation, you know, flood stuff, yeah. and coming in, you know, like they did, having to come in on the weekend and erect, you know, the flood control system at West Street, and mm -hmm. so um, that's why it's broken down this way. <coughs> we estimate this based on historical, uh, you know, experience how much we want to keep in that overtime account, but you never know, you know, if there's a big storm, then, you know, it's like snow and ice. You, you do your best right. estimate, and then your, you know, Mother Nature can <laughs> decide how much you're going to spend. So, mm -hmm. so that's the difference um, between the two accounts. Okay. That question that might not make a lot of sense, but are these, are these coming out? There's no revenue account here, is it? This is, these are just expenditures. This is general fund. This is general fund. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So again, this would just be one that we want to actually put on the agenda for next week's finance committee and city council meeting. I just wanted to give people a preview of it. Um, so if we could maybe just a, a motion to put it on the next finance committee. We just make that motion to place it on the agenda. I'll second. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. So all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, great. And then actually I have a, um, there's one more like this uh, that is not on the agenda and I wanted to um, bring it up as a new business item because it's something uh, a lease got signed in the last day uh, which we didn't know about. We didn't know what the timing would be, but I felt it was important knowing we have a finance committee meeting today that I wanted to raise it with you. Um, and that's why I asked Wayne to come here. It's an order that he wants to bring forward that's a property related issue. Um, he just got the thing finalized in the last day. And so I didn't want to wait and bring it next week to a finance committee meeting knowing we had one today. So I'd rather bring it as a new business item. We're not going to vote on it, but just another preview so that you know about it for next week when you got it in the packet on Friday. So, Wayne, you want to just give us a quick sketch on that? Sure. So, back, and this has to do with the roundhouse, the, the original the building is right there, 10 feet off our window. Um, and um, as some of you may know, the building's been sitting empty for four years now, five years now, since the <coughs> publishing moved out. And it's owned by Robert Curran, Jr. Um, and he just has a new tenant. The building is about 16,000 square feet. A brand new tenant just moved in within the last week. How many square feet? 16,000 ish. Okay. The, the tenant's about 4,000, but the numbers aren't exact because we're not part of that. Um, but it's, so he, he's gotten his first tenant all this time. As part of the process, he wants to clean up the outside. Um, and so if you go down there, you'll see there's some brand new Goshen stonework that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's been underway for about a week. But that's, that's the property he owns. His property boundary is basically the edge of that stone. As soon as you get beyond the edge of the stone, you're on our property. And so he approached us and said he wanted to do some plantings on our property. And we said, great, but we need to have a signed lease for that. Um, and so that's the thing that the, the uh, acting mayor is saying, is that we just got the signed lease in the mail yesterday. Um, so now, but we can't, we can't sign it, so he signed it, which is always the first step. Then I need to go to city council for you guys to give authority for the, for the mayor to sign this. So what, all, what this would be doing is giving him a lease to do plantings on our property. It would give him the responsibility to maintain the plantings, and it would give us the right at any point with 60 days notice to cancel the lease. So if something changes in the city, for some reason, the plantings are in the way of a parking lot or in the way of something else, we have the right to get rid of them. Um, okay, so what he's asking, the building has been empty for a period of time. Yeah, four years. Right, and now he does have somebody who's leasing it. A portion of it. A portion of it. So the round building's still empty. The rectangular building right over there is about two-thirds full. Okay. And he is asking the city if we would allow him to go beyond the edge of the stone edging, right. correct? Right, and do plant. And how much is that? It's a small area. It's can you yeah. see it right in the window? Yeah, you can let us see right in the window. Well, let's have a look. <laughs> so he, just to be clear, because the plans show more. He wanted things on all four sides of the building. Yep. There's complications on two sides of the building, so that would not pose any permission. So this side of the building, you can see the stonework there, yep. this triangle area right beyond that lamppost, yep. he'd do some plantings there, and then the brick area beyond the concrete sidewalk, yep. now, he'd do tree plantings. So these would be shrubs here, and then it'd be tree plantings over there, and the trees would go along. And he will maintain them? He will maintain them. 
Um, and again, he wanted to do things behind the building and next to the building. Those we couldn't, didn't feel like we could give him permission for because it's all a very complicated back there. Um, he has a major it's trespass that's behind the building on our property. We so don't. Utilities we, back there too, also. That's exactly right. So yeah. we see a bigger, comprehensive solution for that piece. But we didn't want to stop these two sides from going forward for the other two sides. Yeah. Um, How long is the lease for? It would be for 60 months, five years, with, with it automatically renewing. But again, we can cancel at any point. At any point within that five years? Or five? <coughs> at any point with 60 months. <coughs> okay. Um, How much is the lease? No, no, no. no. That's what I thought. No, we get no, no. for I think it's, yeah, okay. The, the reason, frankly, that we're being very, we're always careful. The reason we're being careful is he sued the city not that long ago. He did what? He Absolutely. sued the city not that long ago. So. And part of what he said is the parking lot on the west side of his building, which the city owned, that he, because he'd used it for so long, that he owned it. And we just, you know, we went to court and it was fine. We, just, we don't, we don't want to set ourselves up for that. So we, we, we love free plantings. You know, it's really nice to get trees. But we just we want to make absolutely sure that nothing comes back to us. Bill Attender's been involved, so he's fine with the details. So it's a five-year lease. It's a five-year lease. It would renew at the end of five years if we um, if we didn't cancel it. But again, we can cancel at any point. You you approve? This is modeled almost exactly the same language on something similar we did next to Fitzwillies. Fitzwillies, the bar on the right side. Yeah. They need an emergency exit, so they put a staircase in there. That's technically a silly city alley. We're not using it. So we're happy to give them a lease, but we didn't want to give up anything in case someday we want to use that alley. So he's going to lease it, but he's not going to be charging any money no. for leasing it? No, because all he gets to is plant trees in our property. Yeah. I mean, generally, you think about this. enhance the area. Yeah. Was that? They'll enhance the area. Because yeah. I know I'm looking at the brick area out there, and it needs to be cleaned up big time. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Now, but you sold the city. It was over the hotel, the whole... He actually sued the city twice. There are two separate lawsuits. He appealed the hotel's permit. And even though technically the hotel is the one who defends it, he has to name the city for that process. So that was one of the suit. Then the second suit is the gravel parking lot on the west side of the property. Um, he had an easement... This was granted 1976, so before my time. But he had an easement to pass and repass in that area. No question the right to drive over it. He had been using it for parking. And so he sued the city saying, oh, my easement to cross over this gave me the right to park here. But, no, I, I read the, um, the sub, didn't we have to give him 22 parking spaces? That's right, we gave him 22 spaces. We had to deed him, we had to actually deed him 22 spaces according to the judge. He ordered that, didn't he? No, no. First of all, we said it. The judge didn't order anything. So the city offered to give him 22 spaces. Um, in within this parking lot here, so he has the right to park 22 spaces in our property. But this never went to a judge or went to a judge for a preliminary hearing. But the oh. city then settled before it came out. So we, oh, sorry, 22 parking spaces. Yeah. And that's what he he had, depending on who counted, he had more than 22 spaces the way he parked cars, the 22 spaces and the way you park, you know, if if you didn't weren't blocking somebody in. So the count of 22 spaces, we all agreed on. The question is, what rights did mm -hmm. he have for that? So the question then is, are we comfortable? I just wanted him to give you a preview of this before we put it on the agenda for next week's yep. council meeting. So you hear about it and have a chance to talk about it. So, um, well, I kind of like it. Um, no, I mean, I, you know, it'll... It, it, it'll, it'll enhance the area back there. Yeah. It'll, it'll look good. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the trees he's going to plant, I'm sure that he's got... Uh, some arborist that has a specific tree he wants to plant there. Uh, yeah, he I want something to... that's going to be low and, and spread out across the uh, into the traveled way here. Right. He hired Bill Cannon, who's a landscape architect yeah. in uh, East Hampton, to do the work, and I frankly can't remember what they are. But yes, Bill had something in mind of what what would fit within that. I mean, it had to be a relatively a pretty good sized tree. That would already be high enough where a car or a van or something could pass underneath right. the branches. Right. It's going to hang out into the as it grows. Do you think before a city council meeting we'd be able to have an update on that, Wayne, on what uh, he's thinking about? I'm pretty sure, absolutely, yeah.
we know too, and he's going to maintain this because we know that as trees grow, as root, root balls grow, and it moves mm -hmm. sidewalks, it moves bricks, it moves curbing. Okay. Right, we have a I mean, it's just something we like. I, I'd rather see trees out there and have to deal with the sidewalk maybe hitting a crack or something than not have the trees there. And Right. So I'll leave, I mean, that, leave that lie. He, like everybody else, would have to do the same things of calling dig safe and, and having DPW yeah. do it. There is a water line underneath there. Yeah. That, that's going to be DPW. I mean, if, yeah. if DPW says we'll break the water line, he won't be able to do the trees in that spot. But We have specific language that we put in for poles and stuff like that for like the utility companies. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, um, are we comfortable then with yes. like the other two recommending that this can go on the agenda for next yeah. Thursday? Okay. Move to yeah. um, send this to City Council. Second. Okay. Well, should say aye. Aye. Great. Can I ask one quick question sure. just to think about it. You don't have to sign this before next Thursday. Um, he would love if you do two readings next week only because of planting season. But if you're uncomfortable, don't do that. So think about that between now and next week if you won't do two. And strictly the window of plantings, this is a great time to plant. Pushing back to November isn't as good, but if you're uncomfortable, then okay. take whatever time you need. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Right. Okay, so um, so that completes the upcoming orders, uh, uh, and so the next item is the financial update. So I was going to turn it over to Susan, and I know she's given us a couple things in our packet to discuss. Well, today we shut down Munis system so that we can flip the fiscal year. Because up until now, you, the current year in Munis has been FY11. So when it's up again on Thursday, I'll be able to start running reports to show you where we are in FY12. So I'll be able to give you a quarterly report of where we are with revenues and where we are with expenditures. But until we flip the fiscal year, you can't get the information's in the system and you can look at it, but you can't print it out. That's fine. So I did give you FY11 um, kind of as a final one. Um, I just want to note the changes. I think I gave this to you in early September. Um, and revenues were up to 99.7% of our revenues. And we had been at 99.5% before. Uh, another $82,000 came in since I last talked to you. So revenues are really good. Um, FY10, we had a total of 99.5%. So we actually did better in our collection of revenues. Um, so you just to clarify for Washington, so 99.7% means that was what we projected. Right. So we were, you know, within 0.3% of. Right. Okay. Right. And for the Department of Revenue, we've actually exceeded that because of that, 671,000 is real estate taxes, and the department looks at that as actually not received yet, but it doesn't look at it as a liability because they know that ultimately down the road we will collect. So had we if, had we got 100% of our real estate, we would have been well over 100%. Mm -hmm. So um, so that was the good news on the revenue side. The expenditures. When I last talked to you, we were thinking we have about 730,000 in turnbacks from city departments. It ended up being about 661. Uh, the difference was mainly some capital projects. Um, capital projects that are uh, complete. If they have money left over, what happens is the money goes back to the original fund. So two of the projects that gave back some fairly large amounts, there was the Armory Lot Sidewalk, which was a parking department one, and they had budgeted 75, they spent 43. So the balance didn't go to the general fund, the balance goes back to the parking uh, revolving fund because, receipt reserve account, because uh, that's where the money for that originated. And then the same thing, there was, um, uh, pickup truck and 50,000 budget and spent 35 so that money did go back to the parking receipts reserve rather than to the general fund so that's really and those were both in parking those were both in parking um, there was 9,000 left over from Smith folks diesel school bus purchase and that went back to the general fund because that came from the general but the other two went back to parking yeah. right what was the original number on the Smith folks school bus uh, I don't you have know? that Okay, and sorry, I can find that short. Sure. Right. So, so anyways, you know, just a small change. It changed by about sixty-nine thousand. Uh, and as I said, the books are closed as of today, and the auditors, uh, Tom Scanlon and his company, will be in about the second and third week of October, I believe, or the third or fourth. 
they'll be starting to audit our books, and then you'll have the audit sometime, usually like December or January. Is it George? Yeah. So, what I'll be able to bring you uh, soon is information on FY12 and how our revenues are tracking against our projections. A couple of scams in the audit. We'll see. Long time. I mean, I'm trying to remember when they were. Scamming. Yeah. Um, I've been here eight years. You've been here eight years. I know. I've been trying to remember when they were. I've been watching pretty closely for a long time, and I can't ever remember when they were here. It was his father first. It was Tom, yeah, Tom Scanlon Sr. They have a large majority of the towns in Western Mass. In fact, every town I've worked for has yes, Tom I know, I get Scanlon it. as their auditor. Yeah. So. I just, I just curious because I, I know that I, I get on the website and it's always in every town around here, every surrounding community has Thomas Scanlon. Right. I know in some towns that we that I've worked for in the past, we've actually did things out and they've still been a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I would assume it's, you know, it's it's a fairly specialized line of work. It's not like you know, oh. a regular accounting firm can no, no. just step in and do municipal because it's such a weird. Right. Everything's done the DOR way, so yeah. I'm sure right. that's. No, I mean, I think, I, think they, I think it's great. I think they did a great job. Well, I think what, one of the things that I appreciate, and George, uh, perhaps you do, is the fact that they're willing to take your call at any time. So as you're going through the year and you say, how should we be booking this? How should we be setting this particular thing up? And they call you. They'll, they're almost like on retainer all year long, um, and they have no problem getting back to you. Wouldn't you say? So I confirm that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I call them. They call right back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was just a question, I just didn't. Right. So other than that, um, the only other thing I wanted to report is that uh, on the Tropical Storm Irene, um, Josh Shan Shanley is working on pulling all that information together to apply to FEMA. Um, initial estimates look like we might might be submitting documentation for somewhere between 200 to 250,000. Um, that would have, um, you know, uh, estimates for road repairs, um, labor, and overtime during during the event. Um, so we're busy compiling that. Uh, There's also, uh, I know that one chunk of it is a bunch of the channel markers in the Connecticut right. River yeah. got, got damaged and had to be replaced. So I think we're submitting for that as well. Right. Who's responsible? Is that not the conservation? It's a good Who's question. Whether it's, the, whether, we, uh, whether it's uh, who maintains them? I don't actually. I, I, I want to say it's DPW, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Or the Coast Guard Reserve, yeah, possibly. Yeah. I think um, Ned told me that they got put in with a grant, okay. and that Ned, Wayne would be looking for grant money because FEMA is only going to reimburse us 75 percent right. of our eligible costs. Yeah. So that he, I think he indicated Wayne was looking for a grant to subsidize that 25 yeah. percent. We can find out exactly who that was. Yeah. That's a good yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. And, when are we going to know about our match matching funds from CPA? Do we know that? Is that going to be? Oh, for FY12, what percentage we're going to get? Yeah. I, I don't know. It was 33.9 last year. And, um, Joe McCarran thinks it's going to be substantially less this year. Okay. And what was it last year? It was 33.9%. Okay. All right. I, I will find out when we yeah. get that number. Okay. I assume they have to close out their books and figure out how much they collect in yeah. the registry. I, I, I just seem to remember it's always like middle of October or something. Uh, I don't know. Okay. But I, I, could, I could be way off on that. Do you know, George? No, I don't know. Yeah. We're going to keep our finger on that pulse too of, of, of CDBG also. How uh, that's coming around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Terry um, has been keeping me updated on it couple of the, you know, the budgets that are happening in Washington. I know we sent some information to Senator Kerry and to Senator Brown and to Congressman Neal just expressing you know, support for you know, trying to maintain those budgets for the stuff yeah. that your committee yeah. deals with and, and the other stuff. So, But I think they're still, you know, we're talking about shutting the whole government down on Saturday. Yeah, I know, I know. So, That's twice in two months. Exactly. So, uh, so that the federal budget process is just we are tracking. The reason I'm asking, 
how are we going to pick up uh, senior center if this drops to twenty percent? How will we pick it up? And, and if we pay, if it drops, say it drops to five hundred thousand dollars, and we use one hundred thousand dollars, which is twenty percent for administration, and three hundred thirty thousand dollars of that goes to the senior center, it leaves almost nothing. I mean, you. Four hundred and seventy thousand dollars. We're going to spend hundred thousand dollars to administer seventy thousand. Mm -hmm. So I know in the HUD the guidelines it says we can use up to twenty percent. This is just my thoughts. We might have to maybe think about using ten percent for administration out of that fund because you're going to find things like the Manus soup kitchen and stuff like that that are really going to be desperate this year. Yeah, their their clientele is rising by leaps and bounds right now. So, in the survival center, and there's a, well, you know, we've been through it. There's a host of things. Um, and CDBG, well, let's face it, Democrats love it, Republicans hate it. Yeah, although well, there's, the there's some big city Republicans who like it too. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, mean, I think Mayor Bloomberg and some other folks yeah. like that. So, but, you know, I know California, but, yeah, but it's so just we'll, so we'll keep track of it. It's yeah. just something that we, we, no, we, we got to stay up right on, on top of. Yeah. It's going really, to affect us. No, definitely. Um, okay. Well, I think, well, David, you said you were having contact with Terry Anderson. Oh, no, we, we've talked about it, and we checked. You know, it, I had an you know, exchange with Senator Kerry's staff last night, uh, last week, to let them know, and they're tracking this for us, you know, because they understand. And, and for all the cities and towns, because, you know, a lot of them are dependent on, you know, the CDBG is an important part of their budget for doing housing and community development, mm -hmm. the social service stuff. So Exactly, yeah. because, I mean, we start doing the hearings, what, around in March? Right? Yeah, but I mean, with, you know, cities like Springfield, Boston, I mean, they're, that's a, they have a ton of CDBG money, so. Yeah. Money, so. But how could we, like with the senior center, like his concerns, how could we just cut the money from that? I have a problem. We can't cut that. We're not saying he, he was just saying that, that we already have that obligation out there, and, and we yeah. have to. It is a good question because yeah, we have to figure out how. If he's saying that this is going to cost us so much a year, three hundred and what, three hundred twenty thousand? Three hundred thirty thousand and some change or something. Yeah. Are you, are you talking about the debt service the yeah. on the senior center? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because uh, that was. Right. I think it was a, a limited number of years. Yeah, I just don't know. Two, yeah, 2016 was the end of it. Yeah. The but then it was, well, just for CDBG. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then there was a $202,000 balloon that we had to make for a payment when we took it over in 2016 to go to 2026. And then there's another phase of it that takes you to 2032. I went over it with Chris Pyle a few times. And um, so I don't know. That, just exactly where the money will come from yeah. at this point. And the whole budget, we know it's all tied together, it's all a pot of money. Yeah. And then we sat at 1.6% of our total budget for capital improvements for years. Mm -hmm. It stuck at 1.6%, and now we've eaten it up to 2.6%. And just that 1% that it goes up is a million dollars, yeah. or 950000 it's a lot of money. Yep. We will never achieve that 5% that the state says we should have for capital improvement. Mm -hmm. And we would definitely will never hit that 5% at this point in free cash that the state would like to see us have. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So that's going to So somewhere along the line, and if, and if we eat capital improvements up a percentage, it's got to come from somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Might as well take it. And, uh, so I, don't know. so I know we're in negotiations with different contracts, different bargainings and stuff like that. We need to be extremely careful. I'm just just yep. throwing it out there okay. that uh, diversify our revenue streams. We have got to figure out just exactly what we're doing. Yep. Okay. And I'm not in the bargaining unit or in the. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so um, did you have any other items? No. Letter updates? Okay. So any other items? Yeah. Okay. So then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay.